Greetings, Nick and also Don from Sweetwater here. I've got a question for you, my friend. Number one, do you own a tube amp or tube amps? And number two, if that's true, what on earth are you feeding them with? Volts, right? And what comes out of the wall is always the same, right? Is that wrong. true? Exactly, 110% wrong. It's supposed to be 120 volts. We're in a studio. 121. I've been in venues where there's been 112, 113. Mm -hmm. If you're outside with a generator, oh, good, good luck, luck with that. And sometimes it can go up to 125, 126. While some vintage amps, and we'll get more onto that in a minute, like around 110, 108 volts, most modern amps don't. They like to live within 117 and 120 volts. And this amp here, my UK DSL 100 all tube Marshall, happens to like 117 as its optimum voltage for me as a player, if you can call me a player. How I learned that was by happenstance. I recorded a demo for an artist, then we went into the main studio, and with the same amp, same guitar, same everything, same cabinet, it didn't sound the same. It had lost something. It had lost the clarity. It had lost the bark. It had lost the mojo. We checked everything, double-checked everything, triple-checked everything, and then the engineer said, hey, what was the voltage in the place you did the demo? because the voltage here is 120 to 122. So I called my friend at where we did the demo, 117. And believe it or not, those three or four volts made all the difference in the world. And to prove that, I'm gonna play a riff at 121, which is what we're getting right now, because right now the brown box is in between the amp and the wall but it's not doing anything, it's on bypass. Then the one and only Don Carr is gonna click it down. We'll go to 117 and I'll play the same riff again, allegedly, and we've both heard and felt the difference. Everyone in the room has. Hopefully it will come across your phone or your iPad or your PC or whatever on earth you're listening to this on. So let's get off standby. And by the way, I would normally use an SD1. This is my uh, conditioner. I love what this does to the lows and the highs, but because I want you to just hear guitar, amp, brown box. Sorry, pal, you're out. So that said, I'm gonna take the amp off standby and hack my way through this riff, first at 121, which is the wall voltage. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't like that. Ignore the quality of the playing or lack thereof. It was stiff. It was hard to play. It gave me no symbiotic je ne sais quoi. I didn't want to play it. So now I'm going to go to the one and only Don and have him please turn it down to 117, one click at a time. Let's do this. Okay. And the other thing about this is that as you click down, you'll notice that the voltage kind of goes down and goes back up and goes. So we'll have to like take our time with this to get it to 117. So make yourself a cup of coffee. <laughs> ah, there we are, 117. So now the exact same riff, allegedly, at 117. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's more like it. It felt good. It made me play better than I played before. To me, it was tighter, had more bark, had more clarity, and it just felt right to play. Yeah, the low end is just, it's just better. I mean, that it's tighter, it's more refined, it's more contained, it's in the spot where you want it to be. Uh, at 121, the low end was a little looser, honestly. Yeah, and it was stiff. It yeah. felt stiff to play. Yeah. I have the older version the, uh, brown the original box. brown box. Yeah. Uh, the original which is brown that box. Big boy down which there, is, right? Yeah, which is this guy right here. This is the two, but I have this guy in the in the one. Um, and I I have a Morgan SW22. And Great. I will not go anywhere without this thing. I mean, it because that amp, that amp for me is at 119. Mm -hmm. And I just I love it at 119. And so I always want to find that. And again, like you say, so many venues. It's all over the place, man. Even studios, like I said, this is a studio, a professional, well, it's a it's a video studio, but 121 out the wall, and earlier it was 122, so you never know. By the way, this is not an attenuator per se, it's not something that drops the volume of the amp. It does attenuate the voltage if you want, but that's a right. different story altogether. Right. It's also not a regulator. What it is, it's controlling the voltage coming out of the wall 
before it hits your amp. And by tweaking it, you can find the sweet spot. And this bad boy is great. The folk at Amp RX say that this is for the vintage guy, because like I said before, there are certain vintage amps that really 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 work well at 110 and what people don't realize is back at that in that era that was the voltage coming out of the walls exactly it was 110 originally back in the yeah. you know back in the 60s right the grid nothing to do with the <laughs> matrix the grid and the cool thing about this bad boy is it goes down in increments of one so you can get down one volt at a time seven volts but you can also go up three volts and then up another two that way if say i'm at a venue that's 112 i can get to my magic 117 spot by going up a hair. Pretty darn cool. Voltage conditioning. And also, because you've got this real-time display, when the voltage in the room changes, you can tweak accordingly if you've got half a brain and can <laughs> tweak a knob. So And can count. Yeah, so. It can count, so I gotta do. Amps are like pets. You've gotta feed them. Feeding pets is expensive. This is not that expensive. It's a one-time buy. Don't eat it, even though it's a nice name. <laughs> Just buy it, use it, and enjoy the tonal results and satisfaction you get. The consistency. That's what you That's want. That's the word. Consistency. Look at that number. Hanging right in. Love it. And on that note, Don, thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you, we are out. Goodbye.